Hundreds of people packed a funeral home in Stonewall yesterday afternoon to remember Lisa Gibson and her two young children who died last week. Then last night, a candlelight vigil held at the fork saw hundreds of people gather to remember Lisa, Anna and Nicholas. Those in attendance brought white flowers, which were then dropped into the Assiniboine River to float downstream. There are reports Gibson dealt with postpartum depression. Organizers say the deaths have had a wide impact on residents in the city and they wanted to raise awareness of mental illness. To reduce stigma and shame surrounding mental illness of any type is is a big part of why we're doing this, and I, I hope that that's what's going to come from this tonight. Meanwhile, a public memorial that had been set up outside the Gibson's Westwood home has been removed by the family. The memorial has been replaced by a sign thanking those who had placed toys and flowers as a tribute. A man from Shiloh is in hospital after his SUV collided with a train at a level crossing just east of Brandon. RCMP say the SUV collided with the side of the train near its engine at a crossing on Highway 468 around 5 o'clock yesterday. Mounties say the crossing is reported to be equipped with signs and flashing lights. The extent of the man's injuries isn't known. Samples of the fluid taken from the derailed tanker cars in lac to Quebec are now being analyzed in the Transportation Safety Board lab to make sure the contents were properly labeled. Hey. 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 The intensity of the July 6th fires surprised investigators who say the registered dangerous goods should not have created such a large explosion. Both the TSB and forensic crews have wrapped up their on-site investigations with the coroner's office saying workers did everything they could to find all of the victims of the tragedy. Five people remain missing. 42 bodies have been recovered after four weeks of almost non-stop searching at the scene. The New Democrats were the big winners in the Ontario provincial by-elections where five seats previously held by the governing Liberals were up for grabs. The NDP, the NDP captured a pair of seats in London West and Windsor to come say, while Premier Kathleen Wynne's Liberals won a riding in both Toronto and Ottawa, while the Progressive Conservatives won the Etobicoke Lakeshore riding, giving the Tories their first Toronto seat in a decade. Ready, set, go. The Great Manitoba Duck Race is back for yet another year. Very pleased to see uh, the free press team. The race is part of the Great Manitoba Duck Race Lottery, which kicked off yesterday. People buy tickets to win prizes, including a 2013 Jeep Wrangler, a pair of his and hers Vespa scooters, and a seven-night all-inclusive trip for two to the Mayan Riviera in Mexico. Proceed sales will go towards the park's redevelopment plan, which includes the Journey to Churchill exhibit at the Assiniboine Park Zoo. You've watched the park and the zoo slowly transforming, and there's so much more to come. But we really do need the entire community to get involved. We have a lot, uh, a long ways to go in our fundraising campaign to complete the entire $200 million transformation of the park and the zoo. The duck race goes September 7th when up to 30,000 rubber ducks will race down the Assiniboine River. Tickets are $10 for one duck, $25 for three. For more information on how to order tickets, head to breakfasttelevision.ca. Grab a blanket, a chair, and some friends. Movies in the Park is back for the third year tonight at Assiniboine Park. The free family entertainment runs every Friday until August 23rd on the Lyric Lawn. There are two movies each time, an early feature at 7 o'clock and a late feature at 9.15, playing on a 27-foot wide outdoor screen. Tonight's movies are Brave, followed by The Avengers. 42,000 people took in the event last August. And we'll have more local news coming up at 7 o'clock. Now we'll head out to Kenora and check in with Drew Kozov.